Hey, it's John and Mike, FruitAshDudes.com. We are doing our sour blend. We've uh, hinted at this for many, many years now because I've been making sours for many, many years. So, let me just get you caught up if this is your first tune in. So, uh, I've been making a sour. Uh, I followed a recipe out of Jamil Zanishev's book. Um, I can post the recipe uh, in the comments below if you'd like to follow along at home. But three years ago, I made a sour on the weekend before July 4th weekend, so the last weekend in June. Chose that as the day or the days, Saturday, Sunday, I think that's pretty close enough, to brew a sour and keep brewing one a year until I had three. So three years ago, 2014, brewed my first sour. So it's, it's a combination of wheat and um, barley malt extract, um, some old hops, and uh, the bugs that I put in are a Rosalaire blend and put in a packet of Safe Ale 05 just to make sure something happened. Looked like something happened. After that, two years ago, brewed again, transferred the year-old sour, are you following me, into another fermentation vessel, and then the wort I had just boiled that day went on to the cake. Then one year ago, I transferred that into another vessel and put another batch onto that cake. So this one has gone through, well, this one has like a major cake that it got fermented on. So what we're gonna do today is taste Three years worth of sours. Three year, two year, one year old sours. Three, two, one. And then we're gonna taste a commercial example of an, a goose, a blended lambic, to kind of get sense of what that should taste like. And then we're gonna figure out, we're gonna do some experimentations, like figure out like, well, maybe we'll do an 80-10-10 split. I'm not really sure which ones are gonna get the 80 or what, but we're gonna do some splits and then come to some you know, decision of what the master blend should be and then at some later time I'll bottle it up and uh, then we'll taste it. We'll see how that comes out because I'm going to carbonate that and that should be quite nice. Okay, since I've been talking and you've been tasting, this is the three-year-old. The far left. The far left, so from my, uh, my left. Three, two, one, go. So what do you think? This is uh, Strung off the nose, that's for sure. I think we've tasted these in the mm. basement before. We should probably even bring that video into that. I'll put that, a link to that. Sure. And just to see like how that so looks. So year three. Compared notes. Year three has a uh, fairly pleasant sour beer aroma. Okay. It's a, uh, and its aroma is the sourest of the three to me. Mm. The aroma is, the yeah. The aroma is the, this, this has a most balanced, mm. what I'm ex I expect out of a sour beer aroma. Okay? Okay. Year two? Yeah. <laughs> year two has got a very, like, dark sugar and <coughs> Belgian like, wow. um, like a quad type of aroma to it. Mm. And I wonder, too, if it's, uh, if it's got the most oxidative character to it. Um, it's definitely have a, a deeper, richer presence than, than True. either of the other two. And year one has uh, uh, practically very little aroma to me. Now these are all still right now. Yep. Too, to keep that in mind. The aroma is very mild on year one. So I've also tasted them all too. Hmm. None of them stand out to me as being... They're acidic, but... They're not mouth puckering sour um yeah year two i think is the most sour yeah year two is i when i first tasted it it uh has the most souring properties that's for sure year three is probably the most pleasant mm. of the three mm. but it's not as sour as i think i'd like it to be or as bright as i'd like it to be true i'm trying to decide if year two is like it's sour, but I'm trying to decide if it's like appropriately lactically sour or if it's because there's a oh yeah, there's like a solventy finish to it. I get more of an acetic character out of this one. Mm. There's definitely some acetic acid in that one. 
What was interesting is because the same cake evolved. If this one is acetic, has some acetic, this one does not, mm. which was pitched on that cake. But that doesn't mean that it didn't start to pick up as its acetic acid character in year, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't in the original cake. In the beginning of year two, between year one and two. Okay. There's a, interestingly, there's a fair amount of like body to these. Mm. Yeah. Like a, maybe not body, but a viscosity, a mouthfeel. There's a mouthfeel to yeah. it that's got a certain amount of viscosity. Again, upon maybe carbonation, to be lifting it up in a little bit of carbonic acid bite might help help support them a little bit too. What do you think? What do you think? Well, I I think I agree with a lot of the things you're saying for sure. Um, I'm just trying to now get some ideas of like how to blend. And, I think you can uh, see on camera, right? Your two is the dark. Yeah, the that's three, the other right? thing that's interesting as well. Get a camera which I think we've that. we actually talked about that in the uh, the preview video when we were just tasting things at that time. So I don't know. I think that certainly this could be, you know, your one year. It's not as sour, or you know, or but certainly has a fresher taste. I wonder if I'm picking up a lot of like, you know, I was using old hops too, trying to get, you know, not as much bitterness in, but I, I'm getting some bitterness off of year three too that uh, I'm not getting on the other two. In any case, I'm, it'd be interesting to see, um, you know, to try to, I'm almost like cut a little bit of, if you think that's acetic acid, cut use a, a good portion of, of year two, but blend in, you know, these, the, the third one and, and the first, the third year and the first year to sort of bring that back, you yeah. know? It's almost like maybe a 50, 25, 25 split would be a good start. But what we want to do now is now that we have sort of what we're playing with here, question for you, because I think this is important too, and I've read this, do you think any of these are bad? Meaning, would you not blend any? Would you like take one out and not blend? I would think where these stand right now, I would, I would, I like this one the most. Okay. I think I would see if there's any character in the year one that could complement year three. Okay. Year two, I'd be very careful about how much year two I put in there because I'm just afraid that there's a there's an acetic acid and a and a solventy thing in there that I might that might not work there. So I think mm. what I what in my mind working with the two at first to see what I could get. Yeah. And then seeing is there room in there for some mm. of this character Second one. Okay. in there. Like cuz this one does have the most This one has the most yeast drip yeast like fermentation character on the Belgian side, yep. on the, the Belgian side of my palate. Where these, the yeast character in these two is cleaner, mm. but these two are expressing more of the bacterial blend. Like these ones are more Rosalaire present. This one has got a little bit of that astringent Rosalaire from like when we've tasted a couple of my sours, there's mm. that, it's almost as if it was on oak, but there is no oak right. in there. Got so yeah. Yeah. there's a little bit of that in the back of the tongue. So. I, we need that flavor for Got sure, I, okay. I think. Okay. So I just thought, I don't know, I think we'll have to play with it. I mean, okay. I think we do a little bit of one, three and two together, a little bit of two and one. I mean, you just gotta sort of play with the flavors in your mind, even by sipping them and then going, maybe that does work, maybe it doesn't work. Got it. I don't know, that's how I guess I would approach blending. I'm not sure. We're new to blending. So we're, that's, 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 why I, yeah. that's why we're doing it on Gamer because yeah. I think that people could watch this, get tips, or just say like, all right, these two guys yeah. did it. And uh, this is what the conclusions they came to, but everyone's going to have different uh, <laughs> different blends, and they're definitely and the best way I can describe this one. It's it's almost got that, that like a big barley wine nose to it, mm. you know. Yeah, I think so, I, when you said quad, I picked that up too a little yeah, bit. That's dark for sure. fruit, quaddy, alcoholy. There's a solventy thing to it. Okay, it's not over the top, but I'd be I'd be worried that if 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 the, if it's post well, it's in there, that whatever microbes might be doing it, maybe I wouldn't want it. I, I just don't know how much it would contaminate the rest of the blend. But that would be cool to find out. I mean, a blend bottled, put away for another year to see what happens, right? That's right. All right, we need some crackers, <laughs> and then we're going to pop that open. So we'll be right back. <laughs> right back. 
Okay, so we do have an Ode Goose uh, from Hansen's Artisanal. They've been, I guess, blending lamb and lambics since uh, 1896. Before our time. Uh, a little bit before. I our think time. we started the channel a few years ago. Yeah, like 1898. Yeah. So, all right, sorry. You always go with the other guy's glass first. So we're gonna taste this. Oh, quite carbonated. Very carbonated. Which is nice. Because that's um, something it's that... champagne levels right there, folks. So, I am not going to do a natural, you know, uh, whatever, tertiary fermentation or whatever in the bottle. I'm actually going to add, um, that is just all head. That is so sad. Um, I'm actually going to add priming sugar to the bottles because yeah. I just don't have time for that. Um, but I'm going to try to figure it out based on... I think that I'll need to look at the chart of, of what the style calls for. I know that uh, fruit uh, lambics, you know, they're like four, you know, what was it, four uh, levels of, of carbonation or whatever. Um, the uh, gooses, I think, are something in the, uh, I think, uh, high twos, maybe mid threes. I was just, I looked at it quickly. I was skimming. Um, but anyway, this looks uh, effervescent. For sure. When you were pouring it, yeah, there was some aroma coming off there. What did you get right off the bat? I mean, I didn't even get to my nose. I could just smell it when you were really? pouring it. Really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's like a sulfury. The sulfur was incredible when you were just pouring yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Sulfury like Budweiser type thing going on, which is kind of sad. Yeah. Again, um, I'd say sad a lot, I guess. The aroma. I would describe the aroma as uh, if it, you jammed. Three, four skunks inside an empty tire and let the tire on fire. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's, it's there's a burnt it's a aroma skunky. and there's it's a, a little there's like a, it's, but it's not that bright sulfur aroma you normally no. get off. Of. It's like a. There's nothing better than it's a deeper driver sulfur like like you getting like, me like laughing. Tire. Like, I have I had foam on my nose. Thanks a lot. All right, here we go. I'm starting to get a little bit of like straw. Whoa. Wow. A little straw out wow. of it. From the, wow, but it doesn't smell acidic to me. Um, no, it does not. It tastes acidic, and, mm -hmm. it's, and it has burnt rubber in there too. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. It's definitely yeah. That that aroma carries into the flavor, but there's a, a nice acid mm -hmm. on the tongue, and it's bright. Yep. It's fairly crisp. It's pretty dry. Mm. It's definitely. Oh yeah, it's acidic. It's definitely effervescent. Yeah. Let me pour a little bit more of this, baby. Let's talk about the body when you have a chance. The the mouth feel. Um, because I feel this is pretty thin in terms of uh, body. It is thin. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it certainly has like a champagne. Yeah. Like I think that the heavy carbonation is probably one of the defining differences between this and say your year one. Because mm -hmm. I think your year one is fairly the lightest on the body, but yeah. yeah, yeah, I can't get over that. It's almost like pencil eraser aroma mm -hmm. that carries into the flavor. Mm -hmm. Again, so this is an imported beer. Who knows how it's been handled on its way here? Yeah, yeah. This has been here. Yeah, but I get it. I get it. Um, of course, though. Now, if we want to talk about it in terms of the construct of. Um, Blending, right? Yeah. It's interesting to wonder if, like, that aroma is being driven by part of the blend. Is this a post bottling issue? Because um, I do get a little bit of straw in the aroma after my. You have to. You really gotta keep sampling the aroma in order to sort of become mm -hmm. palate blind to the strongest part of it. And then some other parts emerge afterwards. And I think I'm getting a little bit of a Pilsner straw character. I'm starting to now get a little bit of like a corn, popcorn type of thing. Reminiscent of the, yep, that one that I have. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I like the acid quality of it. Yeah, I think I like that's what brightness. I'm, I guess that's what I'm trying to really okay. dial in in my brain is the acid quality because you know I think that each of the the years the of the 
you know, the sour beers that I made have different levels of acidity. It's almost like I want to be able to match that. Do you think any of your beers achieve this much acidity, though? Um, I think that second one, even though it's a little... Mm. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, you're right. It's a little different. So I think the thing Strong that would be bit. is, is there an amount of that second one that could make it into a... So, so let me, let me, let me say this a different way. Mm. Some of its other flavor qualities aside, number two represents the most acidic one that you have. Yep. So to drive the acidity, at least in your mind, is a little thing for building the blend. We would have to decide if there's an amount of two, year two, that can go into the blend such that we don't get too much of that other flavor, but it helps lift up the brightness yep. a little bit. Yep. Okay, so that's that's an interesting thing to keep in mind. We'll keep that to the side. And we'll so in trying to that. decide how to engage, how to get started in the blind, I think that's a useful yep. little note. I think so too. And then everything else, I mean, it's, it's hard to really value any of the other aspects that you bring out. I mean, when you're talking about skunks and, you know, rubber erasers and things like that, I, that's something that I don't really aspire to. No, but it could just be, it's certainly none of those aromas are in your beers, yeah. so it's certainly, it, whatever the beers that went into this and got blended, that's, yeah. that's some of that had to come from here. True. Again, don't unless, know, it, yeah. unless it was a post-bottle storage issue. Who knows? Um, but, you know, but one thing I always keep in mind with sour beers is I've always noticed that certain sour beers, when you're tasting something new for the first time, that first whiff or that first affront on your palate is usually like pretty, oh my gosh. And you've got to be willing with sour beers to come back Get for a second it. or third <laughs> sip. Because now that I'm a few more into this, look, I mean, I yeah. feel this. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm drinking it. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, I don't know if I'd go out and buy one of these guys, but I'm telling you that hmm. certain aspects of it are starting to warm up on me a little bit. Okay. So, I think that's, you always got to keep that in mind with sour beers. Yep. You got to, because your palate's just not ready for it, no matter what. And I think it's, maybe it's just some of your palate going, oh, let me recalibrate to this acidic thing that I'm tasting. Okay. So, I think the takeaway here was just to try to nail that acidic quality of a commercial blended yeah. lambic yeah. or a goose. So we're gonna try that. We have some thoughts on what we wanna try, but like, I think it'd be interesting to see how we go through the process of trying to blend three different beers into something yes. magical. So let's get that set up and then we'll come back and go through that process. There we go. Okay, we just did our first blend. This is two parts of the third year, two parts of the first year, and one part of the second year. And the part, <laughs> a lot of noise there, the part is one teaspoon. So I think you can, Mike says you can go as small as this for just one taste. We don't want to like take out more samples out of the... Um, yeah, rather than hit the yeah, fermenters, right? Yeah, let's you want to this. create enough that you can taste it a couple times and make an evaluation. So we've got some small glasses here so we can really get our nose in it. Um, and we just use a teaspoon. But as long as you stick with the idea of using parts, yes. then if you come to a, let's say you come to a blend where it's 4-1-1 and you want to scale that up, you could just simply scale that up to be four gallons, one gallon, one gallon. Or if you didn't want to burn through that much of the individuals, you could figure, I'm going to do 10, 22 ounce bombers, so that's 220 total ounces. And then you just need to calculate the 411 in yes. that, right? So, anyway, I have to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> when you pitched the idea of let's just dive in with a 2, 2, and 1, yeah. I was thinking, I don't even want one in there. But, but, the aroma is actually. You like it, huh? We've tamed down the. that quad thing. It's still pretty strong, but it's been tamed down. Maybe maybe I'm just overreacting to the fact that we've tamed the beast here. Right. A little bit. Alright, let me taste Put it. Put the reins on it. 
But now know. this tastes more like a finished, like a quad almost. It's not, or a barley wine. It's not as super strong. No, it's it's not. Um, it does have uh, some acidity in it. It's not as uh, acidic as our friend the old goose, wow. but it's a tasty little beer. It's a tasty little beer. It's interesting. It's mentally trying to wrap your head around what you're actually tasting now as a blend of three where we've tasted the three. Yep. Um, it's interesting. I, th I think that two is dominating it. Yeah, that's the thing. It's dominating. Absolutely. It's, it's dominating. It's I definitely perceive a little more acidity than I did before, but the rest of its flavor profile is dominating it. I like the aroma. I definitely like the aroma. But I've sort of lost three and one in there. And um, hmm. I think what I'd like to try is just a little three and a little one together. All right, so we can take our part. And uh, you want you want to rinse that? Yeah, I'm going to rinse that. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go straight up with this. Uh, why don't we just do one part of that and one part of that? You think that's enough to taste and evaluate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. All right, so here's your one part of. The Gear first one. year, and then here's the third year, one pat. That's how we say it in New England. Yep. Now the Spoiler purists of the group, you know, we're sort of getting a little mix here or whatever, but we're just trying to learn how we're, an approach to blending. Because we could spend way too much time on video coming up with like, the best blend, right? We're gonna spend the next three hours. The next three <laughs> hours. Coming up. No more videos posted until we get this right. Well, what do you think of that? This is nice. It's got a yeah. It's clean. Mm. It's got a nice clean aroma with a very subtle mm. little bit of a fruit-like character to it. Well, that's nice. It is nice. What I like about this, yeah. What I like about this blend, yep. is this year one is very pleasant mm -hmm. on its own. But year three, is, year three is very similar to one, except it has that, we talked about it before, that almost the, the, the astringent quality that you want, that it gives you some of that almost like a wood-aged thing, but I can, and it's bringing it to this party, and you can taste it in there. And I think that that works pretty good. Nice. Right? Yeah, I like it. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? I like this blend better than the nice. one that had part uh, part of the year. Yeah, two. yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna try this again. Okay. Hold on. Watch <laughs> this. Okay, so I'm watching it. I'm gonna go one part. I'm gonna. This is the same blend, right? Yeah. One part. One part. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go. You're gonna find the half I'm teaspoon. Gonna go, I'm gonna go. I'm going down to the quarter teaspoon. Oh, quarter teaspoon. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if we so then if we call this, I'm gonna screw this up on camera, but. <laughs> if we now call this one part, right, it's now four, four, one. Got it. Yeah. Right? Yep. Extra points if you can keep up with that at home. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So you think this is enough? I don't know. I'm just trying to, like, See right, what happens. One way to get, so what we did before was the two, two, one. And the only way to get that one lower would be to then go way up or up, up, up on the yep. other ones. Yeah. The, but you can just go to smaller volume. That's right. Something. That's right. A little stir, no, no big deal, right there. Okay. I'm feeling this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. I yep. like the aroma is there, man. Yeah, this might be this might be the key. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling it too. I think what year two is doing here is way in the back. Wow, okay. Yeah, way yeah. in the back yeah. putting some complexity yes. that year three and one don't Do not have. have. Yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. Because it's not enough. You don't really taste the odd stuff in year two, but there's just enough of it that, that you're going, hmm, what is that? <laughs> right? And that's what, makes, that's what makes pretty cool beers, yeah. right? Is when you're, yeah. you can't quite describe yeah. it, and it's not unpleasant. Yeah, it's not unpleasant. It's yeah. it's good. Uh, it's good in a way. It's drawing you in. Going, what is that? What is that? Right. That actually. Yes. That was just a shot in the dark. That was yeah. kind of interesting. I like it. I like it. Well, I think that we wanted to try to incorporate too. Yeah. But I think you have it there. right? Yeah, you have it, but a smaller amount 
make sense. So now something you could conceivably do, right, <laughs> yes. would be I would I would work on it a little bit more. Like you know what? Let your because we've tasted a lot of little stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Let your palate settle out. Yeah. And then try it again. The four four one. Yep. Yep. And try it again. Yep. And then what it affords you then, if you like that, you could go for it four four and one gallon per se. Or you know what I would do? I'd do the four four maybe half a gallon. Yep. Just to be sure yep. that you like it, and you can always go a little bit more in the bottling bucket. But then you, it gives you the chance with the rest of year two to maybe all right take a gallon off into a small fermenter and throw some fruit in there or. Or put some more sugar in there and see if you can get a referment and drive off some of the weird. I mean, you now you've got the opportunity to, to screw around with what's left of the other ones yep. too, right? So my thought always was that I was going to bought like get a few twelve ounce bottles of the, uh, the third year just to have a still lambic, still sour beer, yep. and then maybe a couple of other ones too. Maybe like if two turned out great, get that. But I think that what we want to do is uh, you know get those do this blend yeah. and then whatever I have left is going on fruit yeah fruit it all fruit it <laughs> fruit it kids yeah. so that's that's the plan you I go think from that's us great. put all the rest of it together in one big that's, thing that's fruit. my thought yeah. awesome yeah. Yeah. or we could break it in half and do like cherries raspberries oh jeez jeez right? sorry blend now it all the what's left over now you're just going put it together yes, I love fruit it. It. Yes. awesome all right so we all right, well, I think we have a plan. I'm going to probably sleep on it, but I like the idea of doing four parts of year one, four parts of year three, and then, what's it like, uh, one part? One part. One part? One would, part of year two. Yeah, and when you go to do the big blend, right, we talked about maybe a little bit, like do half of a part. Okay. And then add it in in the bottling bucket. And then maybe right? taste that. And taste it just to make sure that the four four one is appropriate. Because right. that's what we're number two is the one that we want. Just a little bit of complexity. Just a little bit. Just yeah. a little bit, but not a lot. Okay. Well, I'll think about it. We'll try that again at a, at a larger scale. And I'll I'll start small. Yep. Yeah. Start small with that one part. Do a half part first, and then if it's not enough, I can bring it up to maybe three quarters of a part. We'll yeah. figure that out. So that's the plan. Hopefully we've inspired you to blend your own sours. Uh, it, it takes time. You three get years it, in the making. You gotta get going like three years ago. But I think that if you start now, who knows, three years from now you could be doing the same thing and have a whole bunch of beers to be playing with and trying to find that awesome blend that uh, I think we've got. We've got something here. I think we've got something. I don't know, I'm just tasting the, the, the three here at this point because that's good. All right, thank you for joining Mike. For brew-dudes.com, please subscribe, like this video if you like it, and uh, you know we try to do this every week, so check us out. Brew on and blend on. Cheers. Cheers.